There you go. Okay, we are in the middle of Torah Chet, part uh, Hey, in the fifth part of this Torah. The Tzaddik, we spoke about how the Tzaddik is able to go into the four channels through which the Rasha receives his breath of life, and he's able to break those channels, break those pipes, and those channels are the four elements that the Rasha manifests and uses in the negative. Okay, the four negative character traits that come from uh, the the negative expression of the four elements. And because this is a tzaddik that is absolutely clean and pure on the inside from any attachment whatsoever to any of the negativity in these four elements, that's why he's immune to the negativity of the rasha and the rasha's strength and power of the storm, the wind of the storm, has no effect on the tzaddik. And that's why he is not afraid to even provoke the rasha. Then says Rabbi Nachman like this, V'zehu mashpil reshaim ha'de'aretz. Mashpil reshaim ha'de'aretz um, means that Hashem subdues the wicked all the way down to the land, all the way down to the ground, to the earth. And so the Rashi Teva, these words, these four words, begin with the letters Mem, Reish, Ayin, Aleph, which are the initials, the acronym of the word of the four elements. Okay, Mem stands for Maim, Reish stands for Ruach, Ayin stands for Afar, and Aleph stands for Eish. And so this Pasuk, which means he subdues or casts down the wicked, the Rashaim, all the way down into the ground, into the earth, is this Pasuk is alluding to this Tzaddik who subdues and casts down the Rasha. How? By destroying the channels of the four elements that the Russia uses in the negative. So Rabbi Nachman says that when the tzaddik completely purifies himself from any of the negativity, any of the ra, any of the sheker, any of the falsehood uh, that was mixed into the four elements, right? That result teaches us um, that from the time of the sin of the tree of good and bad, good and evil, at that time, everything in the universe was mixed uh, with, with the good and the bad was mixed together as one in every part of the universe and every part of the world. Um, and our work is to separate, to separate and to purify and to clean and to elevate, remove and elevate, uh, return all of these sparks of holiness, all of the good from the bad, to separate the bad from the good and to elevate and re return all of the good back to its source, right? So when the tzaddik does that in all of his midot of these four elements, he completely purifies the, the, himself from the animal instinct, the animal uh, tendencies and urges and desires, the animal, uh, the animals of the animal soul. And he purifies that, he cleans himself from that completely to a point where he has rectified his four elements, his four yesodot have been rectified and clean and purified, brought to a state of tikkun, and now all that is shining is the source of the four elements in the good, the yudke vavke. So such a tzaddik has the power to subdue the wicked all the way down to the ground, which is the, what this pasuk is saying, mashpil v'shayim ha'de'aretz. But let's say it's a tzaddik she'eno gamor, right? Like what the Balatanya calls the benoni. If he's a benoni, and the benoni, the Balatanya says, it doesn't have any sin, he doesn't do any sin. However, uh, he's constantly overcoming the Eight Sahara and, and keeping the Eight Sahara uh, out of like unseen and unheard. He's keeping the Eight Sahara only in a state of potential. So he has the potential of the Eight Sahara, but not in actual uh, in actual manifestation of that Eight Sahara. He doesn't have any sin, 
but he still has that negativity in a state of potential within himself. And so he is still not completely immune from the evil of the wicked, from the evil of the klipa. And that's why it's a danger, says the Rabbi Nachman, for him to provoke the Rishayim, because there is a place within him that the negativity, that the Ra, can attach itself to. Okay, and then the lengthening of the, the lengthening of the breath, the increase of the breath that the Rasha takes, that fills him up with this tremendous power, the wind of the storm, will be a terrible danger for the tzaddik and can cause damage to the to the tzaddik, and God forbid. So he explains, this is a Gemara in Mesechet Brachot that says that uh, it speaks about the, this idea of provoking the Rishayim. And the Gemara brings over there a question. How can you say that the Tzadik can provoke the Rasha? There's a Pasuk in Tehillim that says that, that you should not engage uh, in, in any conflict with the, with the, with the Rishayim. Meaning you should not provoke the Rishayim. So how can you tell me you can provoke the tzad, there's a tzaddik that can provoke the Rishayim? The Pasuk says in Tehillim, you should not engage in any in any uh, conflict with the Rasha. You shouldn't instigate, you shouldn't provoke the Rasha. So the Gemara answers, what's the Gemara answer in the Mesechet Brachot? Who is that Pasuk speaking about? It's speaking about someone who has worry in his heart. So he's a tzaddik but he still has worry in his heart. What does that mean he has worry in his heart? Rashi is, is explaining right there on the spot in that Gemara, what does it mean that he has worry in his heart? It means that he is a, he's still afraid, he's still worried because of the sins in his hand. That's the literal translation of the words of Rashi. He's afraid of the sins that are in his hand. Says Rabbi Nachman, what does it mean in his hand? It means he's afraid, he's worried of the sins that he has in his ha- he has in the potential to do. It's in his hand. He hasn't done it. He hasn't done the sin. He doesn't have any actual actual sin, but he has sin in potential. It's in his hand to do it. It's possible for him to do it. That's the way the in, in Hebrew, that's how you say it. It's in his hand to do it. He has the ability to do it. It's in his power to do it meaning that it's in his potential to do it. He can possibly do it, okay? And because, and so was Rashi, said Rashi's thing, someone that is worried because of the sins that is in his ability to do, meaning in his potential. He has sins, potentially he's able to sin, and he's worried of that, meaning that he's not an absolute tzaddik, he's not a complete tzaddik. That type of tzaddik, it says about him, the Pasuk in Tehillim, as the Gemara says, the Pasuk in Tehillim that, you should not engage in any conflict with Russia, you shouldn't provoke the Russia. And this is also on the explanation of the Pasuk in Chavakuk that says, That why are you silent as the wicked man, as the Russia is devouring a tzaddik that is greater than him, greater than the wicked, greater than the rasha. Why are you at peace? Why are you silent when the wicked, when the rasha is swallowing up or devouring the tzaddik that is greater than him? So what did the Chazal, what did the Gemara explain on that pasuk? So the Gemara explains that what is the meaning of the Pasuk? That you are quiet when this Rasha, when the wicked is devouring, swallowing up the Tzadik, the one who is a greater Tzadik than him. The Gemara says from here we see that a Rasha is, only has the ability to devour and to swallow up it's someone who is a greater tzaddik than the rasha. Meaning relative to the rasha, this person is a tzaddik. But the Gemara says over there, tzaddik gamur enobolea. 
a, a complete tzaddik, the Rasha is not able to swallow, is not able to devour. Says Rabbi Nachman, that's exactly what we're saying now. And not only that, says Rabbi Nachman, it's also the words that the Gemara uses is perfect. And the Pasuk in Chavakuk, the words that it uses is perfect. What does it mean that he's devouring, he's swallowing up the, 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 the tzaddik? It's because the way that he overcomes the tzaddik is through the, the, that swallowing of the extra breath, that sigh that he is taking, that, that lengthening and that increase of the breath, that is where he gets his power to overcome the tzaddik. But even so, he's only able to overcome someone who is a greater tzaddik than him, but someone who is a complete tzaddik, a tzaddik gamur, and obolea. He's not able to devour, he's not able to swallow. Why? Because that tzaddik completely uh, rid himself and purified himself from any negativity whatsoever within himself, even in potential. <laughs> Okay, So now Rabbi Nachman is adding another point that he didn't mention before. For, uh, up until now, I understand that a tzaddik gamar has the power because he's completely pure on the inside from any negativity, even in potential, he has the power to overcome the Russia, to provoke the Russia, to engage in conflict and in war with the Russia, and he has nothing to fear whatsoever. That's what we understood up until now. That's what we know up until now. Why? Because the place where he gets his light, the energy that he gets, the, 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 he has the ability to even go into the place of the Russia, into the pipeline, the channels of the Russia, and destroy that, and he has no fear of any negativity. He's completely immune to the negativity of the Russia. Now Rabbi Nachman is saying, in one word, he adds something. He says, not only that tzaddik has that ability to provoke the Russia, not only does this tzaddik gum or this complete tzaddik have the possibility to engage in conflict in the Russia and to overcome the Russia, but even those that are connected to that tzaddik gum or also have this ability. Tremendous chiddush. He's adding something that we would not have thought otherwise, right? Because it seems to us that you need to be able to actually go into that place of the Russia to destroy the channel of the Russia. Now he is saying, no, if you are connected to that Sadi Gamor, really connected to him, you're, you are, you're, you're, you know, part of his, uh, you're part of his Talmudim, you're part of his disciples and you learn from him and you're connected to him and you follow his way that he taught and that he led the way to live and the way to serve Hashem. So you, you can rely on his power. You can rely on his power. And that tzaddik, whether he is alive in this world now or in the past, he can go and he can do this tikkun for you and you have nothing to fear from the negativity of the Russia. You're immune to that negativity of the Russia. Tremendous. Okay, Vav. Part six. So beautiful. Now we understand the importance of completely ridding ourselves from any of that negativity in the four elements and purifying even on the inside, even the potential, right? Now, how do you do that? How does a person go about such a work? Okay? That's what this part is going to be about. The way that we're, we merit to properly distinguish, to properly separate and eliminate all of the negativity from the good, the klipa from the kedusha, is through two things. It's a two-part process, Torah and tefillah. Why and how? Always Rabbi Nachman points out and explains to us the mechanisms behind it. He's not just going to leave us with a piece of advice and tell us, oh, Torah and tefillah, and that's it. He always wants to explain to us why he's saying Torah and tefillah in this context, what is the mechanism that he's pointing out here in the learning of Torah and in the tefillah that has the power in this two-step process in order to rid yourself from all the negativity of the four elements? Because if you understand the mechanism behind it, you understand the reason why, then you're able to focus in on that aspect of your Torah and your tefillah. When you're doing the Torah and tefillah process, you're able to know what to focus on, what is going on here, what part of the Torah am I, am I in being engaged in especially, am I putting my consciousness on in especially, what part of the tefillah am I focusing on, what part of the Torah and tefillah process is causing this effect to remove the negativity from the four elements. And that's why he always does that. He tells you the eight side, he tells you the practical 
what you should do, but then he goes ahead and he explains to you the mechanism behind it so that you understand how it works and what to focus on when you do the practical advice that he gives you to do. So that's what he is explaining now. <clears throat> so says Rabbi Nachman like this. He says, uh, the aspect that I'm ex- especially speaking about here in learning Torah is the aspect of learning halacha, learning Gemara, learning the halacha and the Gemara. But most importantly, it's learning the Gemara and the halacha in a way that you come to absolutely clarify what is the kosher and what is the non-kosher? What is permitted and what is not permitted? What is pure and what is impure? These are three different levels, okay? And they correspond to the six days of the week. You have the kosher, the pure, and the permitted. On the other hand, you have the non-kosher, the impure, and the non-permitted, okay? And all of halacha comes down to these three categories. And when we learn halacha, when you learn Gemara, your goal, your objective is always to make sure that you come to clarify from that Gemara that you're learning, from that halacha is learning, is bottom line, what is permitted in every situation, what is the not permitted in that situation, what is pure, what is impure, what is kosher, what is pasul, what is not kosher. Okay? And you have to clarify that even in the Gemara, when you're learning Gemara, and, and also obviously in the Halacha, okay? It's to come down, that's the objective of the Gemara. It's not a, in order to be a tremendous wise, you know, to have wise things to say and wise things to say over. It's about coming to that clarity, okay? To clarify in every possible situation and scenario that comes up in life, what is the the holy, what is not holy, what is the pure, the not pure, the kosher, the pasul, the tam, the tahor, the mutar, and the asur, the permitted and the not, and and the and the the forbidden. Okay, and when you do that, says Rabbi Nachman, on that in that dimension of limud Torah, in that state of consciousness, what you're doing is you're according to the Arizal has a whole explanation where the Arizal says, Rabbi Chaim Vital says that the Arizal used to spend at least an hour, even when he was spending most of his day learning Kabbalah and teaching, he would spend at least a certain amount, at least one Seder a day, learning Gemara, okay, learning the Sugya and Gemara, but he would not just, you know, try to understand the Gemara, he would make sure that he went through every possible question and every possible uh, lack of, of complete clarity in the Sugya, any possible lack of complete clarity, anything that was not completely clear, he would go through that question and find an answer to it. To a point where he was in he was he was putting himself to putting so much energy into it that he would he would schwitz. He was sweating, perspiring from the tremendous energy that he was working himself, going through every possible point in the sugya until it's absolutely clear. And Rabbi Chaim Vital asked him, Rabbeinu, he said, Rabbi, why, why, why so much? Why are you putting so much energy into learning this Gemara? To so, to so much, to every detail, every detail you have to clarify and answer every question until it's absolutely 100% clear. So the Arizal said that when a person learns Gemara until he makes everything absolutely clear, he is removing the klipa from his consciousness. The mind of a person has this klipa surrounding it and you have to break it away. Just like a nut has the klipa, the, the peel around it, Sometimes it take, you have to, you know, have to get a really hard nutcracker in order to break it away. So sometimes you have to put a lot of energy into break away all of the questions and all anything that's not completely clear in the in the sugya that you're learning. And that's what that reason will do. So says Rabbi Nachman, when you are doing that, when you are involved in that process of clarifying in every gemara, in every sugya, and in every halacha, 
bottom line in every scenario what happens in such a scenario what happens in such a scenario based on what we learn if something like this comes up what would be the halacha and what would be the halacha according to Rashi? And if someone argues in him, let's say Tosfat argues in him, what would he say the halacha is? And now let's say you have different opinions. What should we do practically? What does the Shulchan Aruch say? What does the Ramah say? What does the Mishnah Bruna say? Tomorrow, if such a scenario happens, or somebody calls me up and he says, uh, Reb Yosef or Reb Max, uh, what do I do in such a situation? You have the clear answer to give him. That tikkun is also rectifying in your four elements in your nature that is made up of four elements and it's separating removing the klipa it's moving removing the negativity from the 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 kedusha from the holiness it's removing the impure from the pure you are absolutely with that consciousness with that clarification you are removing the impure from the pure within yourself you're removing the non-permitted from the permitted you're removing the 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 the, the, the kosher the, the not kosher, the puzzle from the kosher, right? On all of these different levels. And in this way, okay, so this is called lalun be'omkashil halacha, that a person, uh, he settles himself in the depth of the halacha. Okay, that's what it means. When you settle, meaning settling yourself in depth of halacha is basically, it's an expression that is pointing to a state of consciousness. When you're going deep into the halacha, it's not just, okay, give me the bottom line. You go into a deep, into with your mind, with your feeling, with your with your you're experiencing the halacha, the rule, the law, the the, the idea that is being uh, given over in this halacha, in this gemara, and trying to understand with that what are what does that mean in every possible situation, every possible scenario. That's settling into the depth of halacha. But says Rabbi Nachman, how do you merit that? That that ability to properly go into the halacha, deep into the halacha, and to clarify all of these points and to remove the negativity from the the, the klipa from the kedusha, he says that seichel, that ability, that consciousness, you merit through prayer. That's drawn to us through prayer, and that's what we're going to speak about bezat Hashem in the next year. Okay. You okay.